I was I was turning to the right, pulling into 7-Eleven, smack the curb, airbags go off. <laughs> Is this your only car that you have behind us? Uh, I've got a jet ski. <laughs> I had an 89 Ranger out once and... Ford f***ing Ranger. Yes sir. Yeah, I blew the f***ing oil pan on a country road. How do you, how do you break a Ranger? It broke. People keep canceling me for my stereotypes. Apparently my car state interviews are based. Biased. I don't know. And that states aren't as stereotypical as I make them seem. Hey, hey, hey! So instead I'm here, the Starbucks state capital of the world, where a bicycle and a baby North Face are given to you at your birth certificate, or birth, whichever one comes first. And where Subarus are the official car of this state, which could also just be part of Canada. Not really sure why it's not. So I'm in Seattle, Washington, or some city nearby it, to ask car enthusiasts, why are they the way that they are? You wanna see a neat trick? Watch this can't even see me back here. What's your name? My name's Josh. And what's the worst car people modify? Like a Kia Soul with like a Surikawa hanging off the back. And what do you own? Uh, this one right here, it's a 2020 Toyota Supra. Got uh, an FD, an S13, an S14, and a 2004 runner, which is the best of the group for sure. Oh my God, like uh, something from like Kia? Yeah, f yeah. All right, and what do you own? I own a 1998 Nissan Stadia Autec 260 RS. How many times do you no, need no. to like almost say that in the mirror for you to remember all of the special things about the Stadia that you own? A lot of times. God, I saw a Stance Prius online a few months ago. It was hideous. And what do you own? Uh, Toyota Prius. BMW. What do you own? This thing, uh, which is a 91 240 SX. And what do you drive? A car. It's an LS3 Powered E36. Are you a drifter? I could, some people would say that. Would you self-label label yourself as a drift guy? Definitely. And what's the worst car people modify these days? Geo Prisms. Do people actually modify those? Yeah, we just put an air ride kit on one last week. Yaris. Kissel. Nissan Cube. PT Cruiser. And what do you own? Uh, VR699. Uh, 2015 Super BRZ. 2013 VW GTI. Volkswagen Jetta Board. BMW 330i. And what is the like most Washington car stereotype that you could think of? The stereotype isn't really like car scene stuff. It's like Subarus with like big mountain stickers and stuff like that on the back, which is it's fine. It's not my my scene, but probably the Subaru Forester. There's a lot more S STIs and WRXs these days, but ton of Foresters, yeah. Is Subaru the official car manufacturer of Washington? I would have to say yes. Is that Subaru owners love to vape? And they do. They absolutely do. Is this your only car that you have behind us? Uh, I've got a jet ski. I, we have a little bit of everything, man. Do you really? Yeah. Burble tunes? Yeah, burble, yeah, burble, burble tunes, tunes, yeah. What, what sort of car owner has the most burble tunes? Oh, jeez, BMW. Yeah, BMW E36, yeah, 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 yeah. What's the official car mod of Washington? The official car mod of Washington? Uh, stolen catalytic converter, probably. That's a thing up here? Oh yeah, yeah, it's everywhere, right? <laughs> sounds terrible. <laughs> this is a really cool and clean 240. A couple cool things. This intake box is the dopest shit ever. These headlights were apparently $3,000. Now, some might even say it's almost like two JDM. The steering wheel is very small. On the inside, there's very small bits and pieces that make this car special. But I would say my favorite thing about the car is the fact that the front has those headlights. It gives it an entirely different look. There's so many people modifying building 240s that a lot of times I think people are getting so into just trying to make the wackiest, wide Lightest, craziest, most basic 240, and nobody's really going back into the rare parts. And I like seeing some of the things on this car that do make it rare. If you are a 240 person, if you just look at this engine, you're gonna be like, oh, that's rare. And then you're gonna realize that the car is probably like $50,000 for 240. What's your most embarrassing car story? It's not a specific embarrassing story, but rather like the whole journey, right? So I had the JNCs, I had the like rep, rocket bunny kit you live and learn yeah you, you kind of you, if you're lucky you have like friends that kind of help you skip some steps that maybe you don't want to be involved in but i i did not body parts flying off the car while i'm driving people around hit a pothole a chunk of the whole front bumper just went up and hit the front of the uh windshield and uh yeah it's a sad day or when it just like falls apart i had this shitty old volvo once where like the exhaust literally fell off the car in a parking lot and i had to like throw it in park and run out and pop the trunk throw it in when i was in high school driving down the road in my pontiac ventura i didn't watch over the oil leak and uh ran out of oil and 
got a knock on the freeway. Did it blow up? Yes. Maybe when I was trying to do my 2011 FD season and I was trying to be like everybody else uh -huh. and V8 and make it look more like Formula NAS NASCAR rather than stuff like this. My first E30 I drove around town before the other two real ones I bought was a Subaru. That's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> I had an 89 Ranger out once and... Ford f***ing Ranger. Yes, sir. Yeah, I blew the f***ing oil pan on a country road. How do you, how do you break a Ranger? It broke. I was, I was turning to the right, pulling into 7-Eleven, smack the curb, airbags go off. <laughs> <laughs> what would you rate the Washington car roads out of 10? I, out of 10, I'd probably give it maybe like a, a 7. Like once you start getting into like central Washington, there's like nothing there, but like the highways and mountains are so nice for driving and just cruising on. Uh, not bad. They seem to take care of the roads around here pretty well. 11. As long as you stay out of the major cities. 6.1. Oh, f zero, dude. Zero? They're, they're like a three out of ten. Negative five. I smacked my oil pan four times on the way here yesterday. Hey, would you like to try and win 20 bucks? What does JDM stand for? Japanese domestic market. Japanese domestic market. Japanese domestic market. Japanese domestic market. J Japanese domestic motors. Japanese, Japanese domestic, domestic market. market. In the Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, Sean wins against the 350Z with a blank powered Mustang. RB. A 3J. Nope. We're, mm, starts no, with a. Q, it starts. It, it starts with an R. An RB. Yeah, there you go. Oh, it, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Literally, oh, it was actually you. almost the same car. I've heard of these movies. RB twenty six. Ooh, nicely done. A lot of people don't like them, but this is the RB twenty six. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, I know. A VQ, of course. <laughs> RB powered. RB powered Mustang. All right, all right, we're good. The TE thirty seven acronym stands for what? Oh. Is Washington better than California from like a car enthusiast perspective? Six. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know. I should know this, but I don't. I feel like you should. Yeah, I don't have T37s, uh, but I feel like I should know that. What is it? Tell me. Touring Evolution. And the 37 stands for 3.7 kilograms, which is what the 15.6 or 15 by 6 wheel weighed when they launched the wheel. You know what? I learn something every day. What does the acronym of TE37 stand for? Is Washington better than California as a yes. car enthusiast? Yep. For sure. Uh, the TE, I don't, but the 3.7 kilo. I remember it's a, the very first TE they designed that was like 3.7 kilos. I will take that. Can you film Jason's face for this? Zach has friends. Tektronic Element 37. That's the, that's what I heard the other day, yeah. By the Sorry. way, TE37 stands for Tuner Evolution. A lot, I, obviously, you guys aren't that cultured in the car scene. If you were, it's something you probably would have known a long time ago. It's Tuner Evolution 37. Thank you, thank you. Hey, is Seattle and Washington better than California for a car enthusiast? Yes, 100%. Yeah. If there's anything that you would want to tell the internet or the World Wide Web, as it used to be called, what would it be? Be the best you yourself you can be and think hard and think fast. All right, I'm gonna be really honest with you. Uh, Washington probably has, out of all the states, the best car scene so far, which is kind of weird because this video started off satirical and everybody that I meet outside of the Backstreet Boys from middle school actually had some really good stories. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let us know where we should go to next. I'm Alex Martini, we'll see you later. Adios, goodbye.